to spare. You've been a staple in broadcasting March Madness games for a few years now. Obviously, 2020, it was canceled. 2021, they had the indie bubble. So what's it feel like to finally be, you know, we have a real March Madness again? Mm. I think, Mackenzie, the fact that we lost it last year or two years ago, um, I, I think really reinforced for all of us just how fortunate we are and just how special this tournament is. Um, talking to all my colleagues, uh, guys who've covered this tournament for years, we all felt the same. You know, we, it was just it was such a it was such a strange and scary time because, as you know, uh, the pandemic had just really starting to take effect at that point. Going back now to March 2020, no one really knew what was going on. Uh, we didn't know what the future had in store for us. And so there was the shock of that. And then last year, the tournament comes back, but it's kind of muted. Obviously, no fans. And that's such a big element. This It's such a big part of March Madness to have the fans in the seats and the sold out buildings. You know, you think of the UCLA Gonzaga finish, it, it, that being in, a, in an empty arena. You know, it was just one of the classic all time NCAA tournament games. And it just never felt the way it would have under normal circumstances. So now fast forward to this year. None of us could wait to get to our site. Everyone was so excited. We were like little kids at a candy store again, and uh, and it lived up to the hype. It is living up to the hype. It's just this tournament for me, I, I get, I'm get. i very fortunate to cover the NFL and the NBA. There is nothing like this tournament for these two, three weeks plus uh, in sports as far as I'm concerned. From a broadcasting perspective, what makes it so special compared to the others? What makes it special is that most of these kids, they're not going to go on to have professional careers. So you know that this is their this is their moment. I mean, this is the life dream for them. It's the pinnacle of their of their careers as basketball players and the raw emotions of this tournament. You see it every game. You know that one team is moving on. Their dream is alive. And on the other side, it's just agony and the rawness of that. There's just, there's no comparison. Uh, in, in the pros, these guys are making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Obviously they want to win and when they don't, they're they're upset and they have those emotions, but there's nothing like this where you know that it's over for, for these kids that, you know, they come up on the losing end of the stick on these, on these big games, on this big stage. So for me, for, and I know that all my colleagues feel the same way, there's such a responsibility that we feel to do the prep and to be as, as prepared as we can to give the, these players and these coaches their due and their respect on this stage. Because for, again, for like 90% of them plus, this is it. So we wanna, we wanna make sure that we're telling their stories and, and, and telling America just how special some of these players are. Speaking of iconic broadcasts, Monday Night Football uh, mm -hmm. made a splash recently. They got Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. So I'm curious what your thoughts were on that. Do you think they're going to be able to make Monday Night Football kind of a thing like it used to be when it was growing up? Yeah, you know, first of all, it was stunning to see Joe Buck leave. You know, first of all, the, I think the Troy Aikman news was the biggest domino. I think that's what kind of started things. I think if, if Troy had decided to stay, obviously Joe would still be at Fox and, and things would be kind of status quo. But when Troy decided to leave, I think that's when things really started to turn. And and one thing I appreciated from Joe Buck, what he said after the announcement was made, was that at this stage of his career, what's more important to him than anything else, obviously the money's great and, and you know, so the numbers are incredible. Uh, God bless these guys. But for him, it's relationships and the comfort that he has with Troy Aikman, I think, after so many years together, is really all that matters to him. And, and now having done this for 20 plus years, and having to bounce through different partners uh, every couple of years, once you can get with someone and, and be able to work with someone for, for as many years as they've been together, you, you really can't put a price on that. And especially when they're of the same age, they're contemporaries, they've gotten very close, I think, off, um, off the field or out of the, the broadcast booth, if you will. I appreciated that. And I think that, I think that the Monday Night Football is going to be phenomenal to feel like you know, not quite what it was, but I think it's now it's back up to to being where Monday Night Football should be. It's a special it's a special broadcast booth for sure. You cover the NFL on CBS, which has the AFC package. So be honest, how excited are you that you're going to be covering a conference that's just going to be completely loaded? <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, we're, we're salivating. You know, this is. It, for, for years and years, the NFC had the stronger package, to be honest Absolutely. with you. And the AFC, you know, was 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 top heavy. You had the really good teams, obviously, the New Englands of the world and, and those teams for a number of years. 
now it seems like the pendulum has finally started to swing in our in our favor. So, yeah, just texting some of my buddies at CBS uh, the last couple of days and weeks. We're all very, very excited with how things are turning out. And uh, I'm hoping to get a few of those Chargers games and uh, to get some AFC West games for sure. It's going to be absolutely insane. This year. If the NFL doesn't put every AFC West game next season on national television, they're not doing it right. As always, you're on point, Annalise. But most importantly, thank you so much for joining me on the show this week. It's been a pleasure having you. The pleasure is truly mine, Mackenzie. And everyone out there, be sure to follow Mackenzie this weekend at the Final Four in NOLA on usatoday.com slash sports. Have a fun trip, Mackenzie. And please bring me back a beignet. I'll send you five beignets, girl. I've got you. <laughs> but until next time, she's Annalise Bailey and I'm Mackenzie Salmon. Take it easy, y'all. <laughs>